you looking for a book that has some concrete strategies for maybe some Buddhist trainings, mindfulness, check out this month's book therapy pick because I think it'll be really helpful for you. Hey everyone, my name is Diana Garcia. I'm a licensed mental health counselor in Florida. If this is your first time joining my book therapy series, I pick one mental health self-help book to review, recommend, and three key insights just in case you never actually get to pick up the book. So let's jump into this month's pick. All right, so this month's pick is actually a different pick. I wanna say that I haven't really picked one of these like mindfulness, Buddhist kind of books before. So hopefully you enjoy this. I actually really enjoyed this book. But the book is at The Places That Scare You, A Guide to Fearlessness in Difficult Times by Pemba Chodron. Um, as you can see here, this is an older edition. I think the newer editions have a different cover. This book was published in 2001. It's about 187 pages. Again, this is at least based on this edition. So it has 22 chapters. Um, most of it focuses on a Buddhist teaching or concept. I'm not Buddhist. Uh, so if you're not Buddhist, I don't want to steer you away from picking this up because I still think there's really good concrete skills um, and just kind of concepts to take away. Um, but really the focus of a lot of the teachings in here, from my understanding, it's the focus of the Bodhicitta teachings. I hope I'm not butchering that. I probably am. As you can see here, um, what this means, are kind of the two words, uh, Bodhi, awake, enlightened, completely open, Chitta, mind, heart, and attitude. So if you can see from this quote, I think this kind of explains what she's talking about, but this completely open heart and mind of Bodhicitta, the soft spot, a place of vulnerable and tender as an open wound, right? So I think they're really trying to have you tap into this kind of open place of just loving kindness for yourself, for others, and really how you can lean into that. Okay, so the first insight, as you can see, it's the three lords of materialism. So what that is, is this concept that they say, or she says that, really when you are trying to escape, when you're trying to look for an illusion of security. So pretty much how I interpret it is that when you are feeling overwhelmed, whether by an internal experience, an emotion, or just something going on in your world and it feels too much, how are the ways that you turn to maybe to escape or to seek some type of certainty or control? So the three broad kind of forms of strategies she talks about are the first one, the Lord of Form. So pretty much just, just asking yourself, what and where do you turn to when you're looking for escape, right? So typically like do you turn to food, shopping, alcohol. So when you're looking for that form of escapism, what do you do, right? And she really talks about any activity can turn into a form of escape. So it's really like the intention behind the activity. The second one, the Lord of Speech, that's when we really hold on to kind of these really rigid beliefs, um, typically like political beliefs, maybe spiritual beliefs that then make us maybe really narrow-minded or rigid or maybe have some aggression or lack of flexibility when people have opposing beliefs. So we really cling on to these beliefs in order to have an illusion of certainty. And then the third one is the Lord of Mind. So this is when we try to avoid uncomfortable experiences by seeking an elevate, elevated mental state. So also with either drugs, like falling in love, or even spiritual practices. So again, we're seeking kind of this elevated mental state. We're trying to go above versus kind of staying in our day to day. Okay, the second insight is really talking a little bit about the goal or the hope of starting to cultivate some more mindfulness and meditation practices. So she really talks about it's not about doing it right or relaxing or getting rid of uncomfortable thoughts and feeling. It's really about cultivating this Maitri or Maitri, the complete acceptance of ourselves as we are. There's four qualities that she talks that are involved in that. So the first one is steady fastness. So that's just building that muscles to really just be with yourself. So also kind of being consistent in your practice and it doesn't necessarily have to be like a formal practice, even if it's just in your day to day or when you notice something showing up. So I like this kind of quote or mantra that she talks about that's just like stay, stay, just stay. So that constant redirection to just stay with whatever you're experiencing in this moment. The second one is clear seeing. So the more we start to meditate, she talks about the more we're gonna begin to be honest with ourselves. We're gonna start to notice maybe some things that are uncomfortable to notice. So she really talks about that you start to develop and maybe you start to notice more like anxiety or angst because you're starting to remove some of these false perceptions or you're letting go of some of the denial per se. The third one is experiencing emotional distress. So that's really moving towards your emotional distress without judgment. So this can be really, really hard. But again, this is one of the reasons why I also encourage mindfulness practices for most of my clients as well, is that we really wanna cultivating cultivate this ability that when there's an emotional experience, especially emotional distress, that you can really learn to lean into that and that it'll be okay that you can learn that skill of leaning into this uncomfortable thought or feeling without getting so overwhelmed. 
The fourth one is attention to the present moment. So that's just simply attending to our present mind and body experience in the here and now. She also has either a mantra or quote that talks about like just touch and go. So like touching or noticing that thought or touching that like noticing that bodily experience and go right so i just really like that it's kind of similar to this concept of like uh notice and naming right so just like noticing and naming it and like letting it go okay third insight as you can see from the screen it's really about one of maybe the aspirational practices is to cultivate four limitless qualities so the first one is loving kindness that's kind of in my head like just self-compassion so training and being honest, loving, and compassionate toward yourself. So really cultivating that relationship with yourself, which I think goes back to that first second insight that I talked about. Uh, the second limitless quality is compassion. So then also extending this loving kindness to others. But the really key piece she talks about that in order to do this, in order to truly be in a stance of compassionate in compassion towards others, you have to be willing to feel someone else's pain, right? You have to be willing to go to that space and be there with them. Not necessarily get stuck there, but you have to be willing to touch that both in yourself and someone else to really be compassionate towards others, which she says is really an act of courage. The third quality is joy. So how I interpreted the way she described it is that you slowly start to appreciate kind of just your own basic goodness, as well as I had a sense that you just start to appreciate what you already have. So feeling that our situation is workable, kind of like a gratitude practice, that's what kind of came to mind, that you start to really become aware of like what you have and being really grateful for that. And even there's this practice that she talks about that when you have that and you notice that, you can notice that and wish for everyone else to have that, or vice versa, when you're missing something or when you're in distress, maybe you can notice that and wish that whoever else is in distress is also kind of finding a moment of peace or just kind of noticing and acknowledging that. So again, that third one is joy. The fourth one is equanimity. So I like this kind of sentence she used in there, learning to leave the door open to all, welcoming all beings, inviting life to visit. So I interpreted that in two ways. So learning to leave the door open, I think both to your internal experiences. So really being open and lack of, and less judgmental towards whatever is showing up internally, thoughts or feelings, particularly the ones that feel really uncomfortable, but also towards others. So I think that's the other piece, kind of learning to be a little bit more open to other people, other experiences, understanding that other people have different perspectives and allowing that, being open, like a welcoming to all beings. So those are practices like, through your mindfulness practices and she'll go through and kind of explain different practices to help cultivate these different qualities. So I recommend this book if you're looking for like a guide to explain some of these teachings as well as just concrete skills because there are exercises throughout the book. I didn't list them as insights, but loving kindness exercise, compassion exercise to help you actually cultivate these practices in your daily life. And I encourage you to check out this playlist just in case if you like this book, maybe you like some other recommendations that I've done before. And as always, I encourage you to continue nurturing your mind, body, and soul, whatever that looks like for you guys. Thanks.